Uh, my name is uh, Tracy Hill. I'm the CEO of True Vine Music Group. Uh, just want to talk briefly about how we came about this teen summit. On uh, my station, True Vine Radio, I was inter uh, interviewing Nicole Coakley during the time she was running for city council at large. And one of the questions I asked Nicole during that interview was, uh, as, as a candidate, uh, city uh, council at large candidate, what could you do or what can we do to help the youth in our city combat gun violence? And one of the things she said, she said, well, first of all, we need to bring them to the table, hear their voices, their concerns, uh, their ideas. And I, I, I kind of chuckled and I said, you know what? I had the same idea. And I promised Nicole, I said, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get this done. We're going to get a teen summit together and we're going to get it done. And I said, but we're going to also reach out to Keyshawn because I know he had a heart uh, for the youth and as well as the great things he does here at the Boys and Girls Club. So I reached out to Keyshawn and I asked him, you know, for a, a meeting. So during our initial meeting, myself, Nicole and uh, Keyshawn, uh, we brought the idea to uh, Keyshawn and he said, you know what? I had the same idea. So I use it. I use this as one of those meant to be moments. It was meant to be for us to bring this summit together. It was meant to be for us to uh, organize this summit, not just for a photo op, not just for us to have some limelight, but to give a voice to our young people. And I'm so excited in, in, in anticipation of what our young people have to say, the ideas that they have, not that uh, just the ideas, but we wanna make sure that we're able to implement the ideas that they have. So we hear again, and I'm gonna turn it over to Keyshawn. This is part one of three teen summits that we're doing. Today is a listening session for the adults from the teens. You're going to hear from them uh, what they want to see in their city. They don't have to speak forever, but they want to make sure that they give us information on what they want to see in the city. So when we get to June 7th, Friday, June 7th, it'll be a session for the adults to finally speak to the teens to make sure that we put in action what they want from us. We can always meet and talk about what we want for them, but they this is their city. And what they want from us, we're going to find out. So we want to make sure that they have a safe and, and safe and peaceful summer is for us to listen to them. So you're going to hear from a couple of our, our, our teens, but also one, one of our very special teens that I have here that works for me that has been impacted with gun violence just recently. And I want to make sure that her story is told from our uh, new police commission and also everyone can hear what's happening outside of our peer view. Um. Hi, my name is Ashaya Johnson Simpkins. Um, I just turned 20 on February 13th, but nine months ago, um, I went to my high school's um, after prom party, and I was with a group of people that I know, and we had went outside to finish, you know, partying like that's what teens do, and I ended up getting shot in my head, and then. Um, <laughs> Um, um, I didn't know I got shot until I woke up three days later in the hospital and I talked to Keyshawn on the phone and, you know, um, at that point I was just ready to come back to work and I kept asking them, can I come back to work? Cause I didn't know what was going on and it's okay. Okay, so yeah, I talked to Keyshawn and I was begging him to come back to work and they kept telling me like, oh, you gotta heal, you gotta heal. And I just kept asking them like, even to my mom, like what happened? Like I didn't know what happened, I didn't know where I was and I didn't know how it happened, but I remembered where I was at the time and who I was with and what happened. And God forbid for the people who were there for me that night, I probably wouldn't have made it because I was on the floor by myself until somebody came and picked me up and it's just it was just a lot because I'm young and I was supposed to go to Howard I had a full ride and then I ended up not being able to go because of what happened and I want to be a nurse like I want to be a nurse real bad and I want to work with kids too working here at the Boys and Girls Club Family Center just it changed a lot for me and it made me want to do a lot of different things and it just especially Keyshawn, like, 
he's really been like a real dad to me. And he always tells me like, listen, you can't let what happened to you control you or have you or take over what you got going on because your light is bright. And he always talked me through like all the situations that I've been through because there's a lot of people in this world who tell me all the time like what happened to you was meant for you and you shouldn't be here. And they it brings me down a lot because, you know, you don't when you don't got a lot of people, it's just me and it's just me going through it. Like everybody's hurt physically, but I'm hurt physically, mentally, emotionally. Like I was scared to come up here and talk to y'all because I don't know what to say. Like I didn't even want to cry. Like I don't know. I don't never talk about this, but you know, I just feel like something like that. If it's for like high schoolers, I feel like the city should be more apart because it's like anything can happen. Like. I know who did what he did to me, and it's like, we young. People be out here trying to do anything because they want to prove a point, and their point got proven through me and two other people that I know, unfortunately, and they're both athletes. So, you know, we all got a story, and we all young, and, like, I literally just turned 20. Like, I thank God every day that I got to see my 20th birthday because anything could have happened. Um, I was in the hospital a lot. I had CAT scans and x-rays every month and I went and they told me like, hey, like we think you got an aneurysm. And the first thing I did after my appointment was come and sit in Keyshawn's office and tell him exactly what they told me because I didn't know what to do. I came in here crying for days. I had to get surgery. I had to come back to work and tell my kids that I had to get surgery and I couldn't even look at them like I didn't know what to do. All I was was scared. And Keyshawn and Raven and like Leonore, they just talk to me all the time and they tell me like, listen, you're young and you gonna be something, you gonna do something and this is not gonna take over you and it's not gonna keep you. So I don't allow it to, that's it. That's all I gotta say for her. Hi guys, so I got my babies here. I got five of them, but four, um, three are here, one getting their hair done and the other one still at school. But I'm gonna call my son, Kevon, up here. He's a student at AIC. He didn't know he was gonna get called, but I want him to come and tell what he's doing and how he feels the city leaders here can help him be successful here in the community. Kevon Coakley, Tula. Hello, my name is Kevon Coakley. I attend AIC International College. I went there to play sports. I'll just tell y'all my story. I went there to play sports, right? So I got there, I transferred over there, but the school I transferred to, my high school, my transcripts didn't transfer to college. So that stopped me from playing football. So I had to wait a couple months before I could get on the team, right? So when I go on the team, I tore my ACL like a month later. So I waited a year later and got on the rugby team. They're outside practicing right now. Now, I'm trying to go on the basketball team, All right? From what I see in Springfield is Open, open gyms could be used a lot more. Jobs, I don't see a lot of job opportunities out there, honestly. So to the teams, if they need a job, make it easier for them, honestly. Because if it's hard for me to find one, imagine them, right? So that's all for me today. I don't have anything else to say, honestly. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Larry Akers. I'll be the incoming police superintendent for the Springfield Police Department on April 10th. I get sworn in, so first of all, everyone come on down, because we would surely like to see you there. Um, I know this is not my platform. The platform is for you, the youth of this community, and that's why I'm here. I heard Tracy saying that a young lady said to him, well, if we wanted to do something, we have to listen to the youth. I was at a stakeholders meeting some months ago, and there was a young lady that stood up, and she was one of our youth, and she spoke. And I turned to the mayor and I said, we have to do that. We have to listen to our youth, because you are our future. And I know standing here in front of you, 
with this uniform on and as a police department, a lot of people have a certain perception of that. Well, I'm here to change all of those perceptions. I was born and raised right here in the city of Springfield, and I had my problems growing up as a young child. Ms. Coakley, you said how you turned to certain things. Well, I got my share of trouble, too. The important thing is that you make the right turn going into adulthood, because you could turn your life around. Every one of us, if we have any doubts right now, you could turn yourself around. And to have all of these adults here that are interested in your life, just like I am, is something that a lot of us didn't have back then. But now we realize what we missed and we wanna make sure we better the lives for you all. So if there's ever anything that you need, you could always call the police station and say, I wanna to talk to the chief of police. And you tell them that you heard me speaking. I have no problem speaking with you. But even better than that, if any of you ever think about law enforcement in the future, I'm here to try to make this department a better place so you may want to work one day because we can't change things from the outside looking in. We have to change things from the inside looking out. When you're there, a lot of the injustices cannot be done. I'm going to try to have those changes in place before you get there, but if you ever think about law enforcement, give it a nice hard thought. Because if you do it the right way, and you know how to treat people with dignity and respect, it's one of the best things you could ever do in life. Because you're there helping people, just like a lot of us needed help. So once again, I love you all. Please understand. And those of you out there with organizations, one of my platforms is I need to know what can be done for the youth. That is exactly what's on my mind because if we get them early enough and we talk to them and they know that they have support from us, maybe we can stop, slow down, or reverse what we're going through, not only in this city, but in the country. So please, get in touch with me. April 10th, I'll be sworn in and I'll be hitting the floor running. So please, if you have an organization like Keyshawn and Tracy and Nicole and everyone else, give me a yell because I am more than interested to hear what you have to say. Thank you all. Thanks for listening to me. And go youth. Hey guys. My name is Tequila Jackson. I'm 21 years old. Oh, shoot. This caught me off guard. I, I, let's see. So I played sports. I was class of 2021 at Central High School. I transferred from Sabbaths. I played Sabbaths varsity seventh grade and eighth grade. The second game of our eighth grade basketball season, I tore my ACL and that took a toll on me because I, I was, uh, what to call it? <sighs> all right. I was training hard all summer and all, all 2016 year. And I ended up switching schools after that because I thought me going to the next school would help me and would be a better opportunity for me. Oh, jeez. After that, I tried to get back into it, but I just wasn't feeling myself. Then again, the next year later, I ended up telling, tearing my next ACL. So that's two torn ACLs. And that took an even bigger toll on me. I thought there was no hope. During the last couple of years of my high school year, when COVID hit was my high school year, that made it even worse because I was planning on getting back into it. And then I started to use marijuana to cope and that that didn't really help i thought it was helping but it didn't <sighs> hello as i already heard my name is darius viscarando um, i go to springfield renaissance high school and i'm a part of youth advisory board and today i wanted to talk about some of my experiences with gun violence 
um, especially around my neighborhood and everything. So um, a few years back, um, um, a few shootings have happened around my house. Um, one that really stuck in my head was um, when a bullet went through the window into the house, made a hole in one of my mom's um, awards. And I saw the bullet and everything. And my house has been shot at before. Um, some windows were cracked. And that was like a really terrifying experience for me because I was still kind of young and I'm not really used to like hearing of these guns around my house and like all this violence happening around me where I'm only still a child. And also for my brothers as they're still very young and they don't need to be around that type of environment. Um, God. Um, and also in the Youth Advisory Board, I have done a podcast as well, um, telling my stories a little bit. And uh, I believe um, it might be on the um, Hampton, Hampton County's um, Instagram. So you could possibly see the podcast over there. If not, I can try to get it on there. So, yeah. Thank you. The elected officials that are in the building and to each and every one of you that are here, there's a, there's a saying that goes uh, that the young people are our future, but I suggest to you that you are both the future and the present. Um, that your input that you're giving on today is important in terms of what we need to do um, to make this place a better place for you. You are our legacy, you are our light. Um, we are moving off the scene and out of positions and you are moving into them. And so we want to do all that we can to support you in every field of endeavor uh, to, to reach all of your dreams and your aspirations. And so the things that we've done in this city are things that uh, were designed to make your life better. For many years in the city of Springfield, our elected representatives uh, came from two wards out of the city, uh, Ward 6 and Ward 7. And we would often have one person of color on the city council. Uh, we worked to change that system. And now we have a city council that is predominantly black and Latino. Uh, and we can celebrate that. Uh, many of them are here today. Um, city Councilor Click Bruce represents a ward. Uh, city Councilor Melvin Edwards uh, represents a ward. Our state senator uh, was a ward councilor from Ward 1, and he moved there uh, to become the first person of color to represent us in the state senate, Senator Adam Gomez. Um, and so this is based upon the work that was done to try to make this city a better place for you. Uh, we worked in terms of holding our police department accountable um, for a history of brutalization against black and brown people in this city. As a result, there is a consent decree that has many uh, requirements for the police department in order to change a culture that exists. Uh, and now we have, for the first time in history, uh, the announcement of the appointment of the first black police superintendent, Larry Akers. And we're proud of that, and we're looking forward to working with him and changing the culture in that police department. And today, at 5.30, we will be at Putnam High School to talk to the school committee to let them know that we want a nationwide search so that we can have the best person in place as the superintendent of schools, that we do not intend for them just to place somebody in that position, but we want the best for our young people in our schools. And tonight, if you're not busy, Reverend Mike McBride, raise your hand, Reverend McBride. Reverend McBride has been recognized across the nation. He was one of CNN's champions of change for his work for anti-gun violence advocacy in the Bay Area of California. We're sorry the 49ers didn't win, but that's okay. Uh, but their work reduced gun violence homicides by 50% over five years in that area. He'll be. Um, my name is Ivelis Brothers Rodriguez. Um, I'm 19 years old. Um, I wasn't planning on talking, 
and I'm not judged by the occasion, but um, what I think you guys should do more is more youth, help more with um, housing. Sorry. <laughs> um, me and my mom just um, been struggling for years. So more, more after school programs <laughs> would be nice. Um, I know people that, um, more open gyms too, I'm sorry. Um, I have friends who go through a lot, like out of school, out of school, and then use open gym to like cope. Um, I say more um, after school um, activities too, because I wasn't very um, motivated. And thanks to um, the program I'm working with right now, um, they supported me and they came to one of my track games. <laughs> they were very supportive. We need like more people who care, more counselors, because there's a lot of kids like me and younger who need a lot of help, just more help for the teens. And that's really it. I'm sorry. Thank you for listening. Evelise, hey, thank you. I know it was kind of difficult for her. Um, I was talking with her counselor. Wraparound services, more help for the teens, looking for housing. This keeps them out of the streets. It keeps them away from guns. It keeps them away from poverty. It keeps them away from violence. So I applaud you for giving up your time to speak. My name is Edwin Pulinario uh, from Libertas, and I'm a Prince Edward Springfield. You, now that you know all of that, let me start. In Libertas, in the Upper Academy, a few weeks ago, three, four, give or take, there was a fight. A fight between two students, I mean three students, two of them were siblings and the other was in a weird situation with one of the two siblings' sister. They, they got in an altercation and the three students got suspended. Why am I bringing this up? It's because in a school, in a learning environment, why should there be fighting? Why should people fight in a place where they should feel secure? where they should be able to learn and experience and develop safely. Where am I going with this? Us, as Libertas, we can't solve every single problem in our school, especially not alone. So we need your help to solve not only any altercations or like ease the waters as some say we cannot do it alone so we need your help to not only make libertas the best it can be but make it even better than that thank you um, my name is cliff salgado i'm from libertas academy i'm in 11th grade and i'm here to talk about an issue that I've seen multiple times and have, have occurred. Um, last month, there has been a fight recently, a physical altercation outside the school with two students, one being expelled, one getting suspended. And I have asked multiple, a lot of my friends and a lot of my classmates how they felt about the school, you know, doing that decision that they made and a lot of them said it was a good decision because they felt safe afterwards but my question is why should students classmates or friends or people who go to school where it's a learning environment should feel unsafe due to violence um, ooh. <laughs> um also Last year, yes, last year, there has been multiple f 
fights between students and because of those fights and violences and horse playing, um, our school has decided to give us limited freedom and has taken um, some of our rights and some of our freedoms, what we can and can't do, due to that altercation of just two students or a group of students. So, so I'm here to address and to talk about, talk about it. Um, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Try not to talk, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's all I gotta say. Um, now we're here to listen. And it's not gonna stop here. As a city councilor, I'll put my other hat on. As a city councilor, it is our, my job and our jobs to make sure things are implemented. So I will, we will advocate for longer gym times. We have the midnight madness. Um, basketball times that we have here at the Family Center. But those that don't play sports, uh, what are we going to do? Um, so I guess I would need input from the teens because I am a sports guy. I don't have all the answers. Uh, we don't have all the answers, so that's why we're here. So again, anything that you need or want or e the wildest idea, whatever you can dream or whatever you can think of, we're asking that you just let us know and I, I, I can guarantee you we'll make it happen. I'm also over the youth committee along with my friend Milo Brown so we want to make sure we're implementing uh, things for our youth so there's some things we can bring through the council as well through our youth committee um, to make sure you all are supported. So I'll just leave you with that. We're here to support not here to talk long. I just want to let you know that we love you all we're here to support and we always have your back. Well, thank you to all of our teens that have uh, had the courage to come up and speak um, about their situations in life in the city, in their schools, and also to Ashaya that has been directly impacted with gun violence and also Eva Lise, who needs the services of these after school programs and also the mentors, they have the wraparound services to protect them from everything. Um, like I said, we gave questions to our teens about what they want us to do to make sure that they're safe, that they have the services. Um, you heard from some of the teens, but I also want you guys to take note of what they're saying, because sometimes it's hard for them to speak. We do all the meetings and speaks, speaking, but we want to make sure that we come back with solutions for them. Like I said, we want to make sure that they have a good time in school, that they're safe in school, that their rights aren't impeding on. We want to make sure they're safe after school, that these fights don't turn into anything worse. I know the focus was on gun violence, but it's also violence and everything else that's around it because we know that one thing leads to another. So we want to make sure that they're all safe.